This is Islington Museum. The museum is situated underneath the library. Inside the museum is a bizarre display of library books. Library books that are directly related to a gruesome murder that rocked the very heart of London's theatre land, the West End, and even had an impact upon the Beatles. This is the true crime story of sex, murder and library books. It's the year 1962 and the librarians at Islington Library were checking in books that had been returned. As the librarians went through the books, they discovered that some of the books had been vandalised. The books had been defaced and damaged both inside and out. Someone had stuck cut out images on the covers of the books, drawn tattoos on the characters, changed chapter headings and some of the text of the book, usually with a sexually provocative side to it and then returned the books back to the library. The librarians responded in the only way they could to this appalling crime. They immediately called the police. Luckily, serious crime in the Islington area had taken the day off and the local police were able to rush round to the library to investigate this crime. Employing the latest forensic techniques, i.e. looking to see who had last taken the books out, they identified the likely culprits as they had helpfully left their names and address and rushed round, possibly with lights and sirens, to the address in nearby Knoll Road, number 25, a top floor apartment. After a brief struggle to get to the top floor flat, the out of breath officers knocked on the door and arrested the two occupants of the apartment on suspicion of criminal damage. The occupants of the flat were the playwright Joe Wharton and his boyfriend Keith Hallowell. They had taken out hundreds of books from Islington Library and it defaced and damaged them as a protest against the poor choice of books available in the library. They were found guilty and were sentenced to six months in prison each. The public were outraged but not because of the severity of the sentence but rather that it was too lenient with some calling it totally inadequate. Both Joe and Keith felt that they were targeted by police due to their relationship as homosexuality wouldn't be legalised in Britain until 1967. After the trial, the defaced books were kept in the special collection section of Islington Library. After his release from prison, Joe Walton would go on to become a celebrated playwright, writing such West End hits as Entertaining Mr Sloan, Loot and What the Butler Saw. However, his partner, Keith Hallowell, was a struggling playwright himself and was consumed with jealousy over Joe's success and fame. Joe was so successful that he had been commissioned to write a film for the Beatles called Up Against It and was due to have talks about the production. Just before the talks were due to take place, on the night of 9th of August 1967 at their apartment in Knoll Road, Keith beat Joe to death with a hammer as he slept and then committed suicide afterwards by an overdose of sleeping tablets. We can hear Joe Wharton talking about the library books in this interview with Eamon Andrews, barely five months before his murder. Welcome Joe. Well, as I was saying, you're a very successful writer. Now, what about this business of spending six months in jail? It's something to do with library books, isn't it? Um, well, yes, I used to um, do very strange things on library books. It was with Joe. I used to take lots of books out of the library and I used to smuggle them out in a satchel and, and uh, then I used to sort of paste a picture over the picture of the author so that when it would say, um, I remember one of them was about a lady of I think, and um, a book on etiquette actually, and um, <laughs> it showed a picture of Lady Lewis or something in her garden and I painted a picture of, or pasted a picture of um, a great nude woman back from a nude book. <laughs> so it said Lady Lewisham and um, people must have been very surprised. Sure. What was the motive? Why did you do it? Oh, it was just a joke. I mean, I, well, also I didn't like libraries anyway. I mean, I thought they spent far too much public money on rubbish. Um, I liked 
books. I mean, I don't think people need books in attic anyway. So you, this was the kind of protest of the kind of books in the library? Oh, uh, yes, yes, really. The flat at 25 Knoll Road has a plaque outside, very high up on the third floor, so it's not easy to see, but it indicates that Joe lived here 1960 to 1967, but mentions nothing of his murder or about his partner, Keith. A film called Prick Up Your Ears, starring Gary Oldman as Joe and Alfred Molina as Keith, was made in 1987 and depicted the life, career and death of the two men. Now, 60 years later, after the book damaging trial, the defaced books are considered art themselves and are proudly on display here in Islington Library and you can only speculate as to their value. It would be a similar principle to the Banksy painting that started to self-destruct shortly after being sold at auction. Art experts speculated that the value of the painting actually went up as a result of the damage due to its notoriety. Vandalism does not always equal a loss in value. I suspect that Joe Walton would have been impressed by the subversive nature of Banksy's work and career. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the other videos on the Offbeat London channel.